And now it's Boomer Life. Lifestyle ideas designed to make your life more engaging, meaningful, and complete. Celebrating the baby boomer generation, this is Boomer Life. Nice to have you with us on this St. Patrick's Day. On the program tonight, we're talking about the latest innovations in hearing, and we're talking about, uh, well, uh, uh, tonight... Tinnitus. 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 With Dr. Ted Venema, who is a registered audiologist with NextGen and Mainland Hearing. Uh, Dr. Ted over from Victoria with us uh, again. Uh, one, we talked about ringing in the ear, yeah. which is tinnitus, mm-hmm. this, this whole phenomenon that uh, it, it, you don't get it. It's mm-hmm. not like a, a cold. No. Uh, it, you, you, know, you can't uh, take uh, two aspirin and, and go to bed for three <laughs> days and you'll be better. No. It's, it's, it's a kind of a condition, isn't it? Yeah. It's it's uh, it can be it it can be chronically debilitating. It can be that bad. The best thing it can be is a nuisance. But the worst is it can tr- totally drive people bonkers. Okay. The first thing someone should do is just is get a hearing test. I was just going to ask you if yeah. if this is a kind of a chronic issue. Yeah. And you're listening to this on the radio and you're going, oh my goodness, so that's what it is. This mm-hmm. ringing in my ear. Mm-hmm. It's only one ear, which makes it even more annoying. Mm-hmm. But it won't go away. Yeah. So you're suggesting a hearing test yeah. would be the best. What to confirm what the condition well, is? Let's just hearing tests for one thing. You're going, to be, you're going to be talking to an audiologist who's skilled in dealing with, you know, who can give you more advice about tinnitus. Fair okay. Yeah. Hearing tests at NextGen and Mainland are free. It's called, you know, you just go in and get a hearing test. I know. Because then I ha- you can find out the level of your hearing. Right. And you can get an explanation as to what might be the cause of your tinnitus based on your hearing levels. They can, audiologists and hearing instrument practitioners are pretty good at, once you've got some data about the hearing levels, you're in a better position to try and explain why the person has the tinnitus. All right. Now, first okay. and foremost, it, it's it's very comforting to know that the hearing test is free. Yes. And is it important, Dr. Ted, yes. when I go into that hearing test, that I inform the testing person yeah. that I'm here because I have a ringing yes. in my yeah. ear? We ask. We take a whole case history on you, and one of the questions we ask is, do you have ringing, ringing in your ears? Okay. And what does it sound like? And when do you hear it most, etc.? Is it constant? Is it intermittent? Tell me what it sounds like. And, and then when I do the hearing levels and I find out a specific kind of pathology, I may be able to tie that pathology in as an explanation for why the person has the tinnitus. Or maybe the person takes a lot of aspirin as a blood thinner. Right, right, sure. And guess what? Aspirin aggravates tinnitus. Is that right? Yes. Interesting. But it's I suppose. For, I so s- it's taken for arthritis. Yep. It's taken so elderly people are commonly put on aspirin. Yep. And aspirin is a known aggravator. Aggravator. Now, again, does that mean stop taking the aspirin? No, but now you know why you have the ringing in your ears. Interesting. And the explanation thereof can help hugely help reduce some of the anxiety. Well, I would think that the anxiety would be, could be some, uh, it could become debilitating. Yes. I mean, I suppose if the tinnitus is uh, loud enough mm-hmm. or annoying enough, uh, it alone could be yeah. debilitating. But if it's just that ringing uh-huh. in the ear yeah. that's there, it's kind of subliminal. Yeah. It's it's audible, so mm-hmm. it's annoying. Yeah. But more than anything else, it, it, it's it's disconcerting. Yeah. I, wanna... I, I keep hearing this noise, and yeah. I keep. Am I going nuts, now, me, Doc? What's I'll, the deal? Yeah. And I, what I wanted to reiterate too, if you've got the tinnitus in one ear. That can be, you know, you really want to rule out the possibility, and I don't mean to scare listeners here, but of a, what they call a retrocochlear tumor. And the, eighth, the, 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 the auditory nerve, if it has a tumor, which is rare, it's like one in 100,000 people. Okay. I mean, we're not talking common. Sure, there. right. There might be, you know, 20 people in all of Vancouver that might have that. But it's, you know, that tinnitus sometimes is a result or a symptom of that so an audiologist will want to rule that out right that's any physician when you have tinnitus in one ear hmm let's let's rule that out because eighth nerve or, or auditory tumors are usually one ear you don't get them in both Oh. Okay, it's one ear. So the that that's like a red flag. It's one of those. So it's but I'm not trying to scare people here. No, Please no, don't. It's no, just, no, but I'm just trying. We're up. just trying to connect the yeah, dots here. Yeah. This is so good to have you with us, yeah. Dr. Ted, because this is just good information. Yeah, you would do. So if, if there's tinnitus in just the one ear, yeah. it perhaps is even more of a reason 
to accelerate to, to, to yeah. that hearing test. Just, you, if it's in both ears, though, what does that tell you? Well, it, again, it, that's going to be less of a, of, of a scare tactic thing. It's not going to be the tumor thing so much, but it is, it's something you're going to be wanting to know what the person's hearing levels are. Does the person have noise-induced hearing loss? Noise-induced hearing loss is the second most common cause of hearing loss in the world. Okay. It's all the, it's the main hearing loss associated with tinnitus. Right. It's a wise idea to get an annual hearing test anyway. People do it for their eyes. Yes. Well, why in heaven's name aren't we doing it for our ears? I mean, it's just like, duh, why not? Right. So they're, 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 they're free. You'll get information there from a qualified professional and that information is power to you the consumer right so that's now, what it is talk to us about uh, that um work induced or work Noise environment in, yep, induced yep. uh hearing loss because you know automatically as soon as you start talking yep. about that you know what my mind's eye mm-hmm. i see the guy on the construction site <laughs> with the jackhammer yep. oh, yeah. and he's leaning on this yeah. thing and it's really loud or you, and yep. i figure that guy he goes home at the end of the day he's probably going to take an hour or two before he, he can hear his kids exactly. talking to him exactly and you're here you're killing your hair cells like we'll do another whole segment on noise induced hearing loss okay. i'd love to but for one thing i mean we don't stare at the sun We all know not to stare at the sun. You're going to go blind. Sure. But people think they can just bash the crap out of their ears. You know, like, and in these cars that with the young, you know, they're boom, boom, boom. The whole car's boom. You know, you can hear the, and it's just like. That's the subwoofer in the trunk, right? Have you lost your mind? Yeah, that would be the subwoofer. And that's good. Those people will be clients. Mm -hmm. Noise-induced hearing loss is the second most common cause of hearing loss. Following age, it's the second most common. Oh, elderly people in Africa have better hearing than elderly people in North America because we have more noise pollution. Our ears were not meant to hear steel on steel. Our ears were meant to hear the soft voices over the crackling of a fire. That's ah. what our ears were meant to hear. Right. The roar of a tiger in the distance. Now, I mean, do you, now <laughs> d- 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 just, just pop across the pond to Africa with me yeah. and get, get one of those folks sitting around the campfire. Mm-hmm. Is it possible? That those people from that very calm, industrial, noise-free environment mm-hmm. are still going to experience tinnitus? Ah, uh, they might in old age. Yep, they might. Simply because might. It's, it's... But it's not as likely because noise is a huge aggravator Aha. of tinnitus. Okay, that's so what hearing, I'm getting at. Yeah, the hearing loss associated with noise often has tinnitus. Most people with noise-induced hearing loss complain of tinnitus. Not everyone with age-related hearing loss complains of tinnitus. Okay. But then again, you get a lot of elderly people who in the past were exposed to noise. Sure. They will have a higher incidence of tinnitus. Interesting Of reported stuff. tinnitus. Now, yeah. when when you uh, conduct a hearing test, yeah. someone comes to Next Gen or Mainland Hearing and they have the free hearing test. Yeah. I did. Mm-hmm. It was fun. Yeah. I went I went to see Dr. Herman Lee at uh, Mainland Hearing uh-huh. Metrotown, yeah. right by uh, the, the mall in, on Kingsway. Yeah. He was a terrific Oh, guy. he's a good one. Yeah. I really yeah. enjoyed the experience. I'd never had a hearing yep. test before. Mm-hmm. And he was really thorough. Good. A- and put me through all sorts of... Uh, we so all are. Well, I, we're good, at, we're I, good at what we do. Well, I believe that part. <laughs> he was he was just a- a- extremely patient mm-hmm. and very professional. Uh-huh. But at the end of it all, uh, I got to see my results. And I have what you would call uh, normal hearing loss uh, based on my age and the yep. fact that I'm a North American. Yep. 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 But nothing profound or, yep. or geez, what, what, no. put, put a hearing aid on that no. guy right You're now. Not, he's, not even, he's not even safe walking no. to his car without no. a hearing aid. You faxed me a copy of your test, and I, I looked at it, too. It's, you've got borderline normal hearing, and actually, we'll spend a sec, we'll spend a time going over your hearing test. That would be great okay, for, that'll be fun. for how the test is done. Okay, yeah. well, exactly, yeah. for sure. And it, But by the way, could, could it be said then, uh, this is ego here. Yeah, go for it. Did I pass? Pass. Did you pass? I don't know how people talk about pass or fail. You have, you pass. You have, you have, you know, a lot of people think about that. You know, did I pass or fail? Of course. You pass because, you know, you don't have a whopping hearing loss. You don't. Okay. So you talked earlier about people who are, who are identified with tinnitus. Yeah. And, okay, so now, first and foremost, I know I'm not going nuts. Mm -hmm. I I have a ringing in my ear, sometimes in both ears. Mm -hmm. It's really annoying. Yeah. But. It's this problem. It's called tinnitus. Mm-hmm. It's not me losing my marbles. That's right. So that's first and foremost. If this problem has been clearly identified, yep. are there 
remedies. Now, you talked about a hearing aid, mm -hmm. which could uh, sort yep. of uh, mitigate the background yeah. noise, yeah. et cetera. Are there uh, pharmaceutical remedies that's for a, this? Or that's is a great this, uh, question. That's a great question. The answer for, for pharmaceutical, no. Okay. The meds used today are no better than those used 4,000 years ago by the ancient Egyptians. Interesting. Okay. There is no snake oil, no ring stop, no uh, healed Jesus. You know, it's not <laughs> no, going to happen. Nothing no. in a bottle. Huh? Nothing in a bottle for it. There are treatments for tinnitus. The, the, the approach that we use is generally two-pronged. It's psychological, and it also uses a little bit of masking noise. Okay. So we use the, and we can talk more about the specific approaches of that, but tinnitus retraining therapy is one approach. Another approach advocated by Jack Vernon out of Portland, Oregon. He's recently passed away. His was more of a masking approach. Today's methods generally combine the uses of, of, of these types. Okay. And, but, and also, there are hearing aids that not only because of the curse of hearing aids, namely they pick up a bit of background noise, which is a silver lining for the person who has tinnitus, because the hearing aid can therefore mask or cover some of the sounds of the tinnitus oh. because of its propensity to pick up background noise. But not only that, there are some hearing aids out there that deliberately can produce noise that can cover the tinnitus and you can sculpt or change the sound of that noise which is it's why, really cool which is why you were saying when you do the hearing test yep. you're very specific if a person ident I, i've got a ringing in my ear that's mm -hmm. why i'm in your office yep. dr ted so you're going to ask all sorts of questions yep. like what does it sound like yep. is it in both ears and, I'm gonna, uh, yep. and, and then you can actually try to reproduce yes, that can. aggravating yes, noise can. so the person goes, that's it, that's, that's it, it. Yep. that's and the sound I can, hear. You can match the tinnitus. First of all, though, you want to get the hearing test done, and that will help explain a possible cause for the tinnitus. Okay, because okay? It, it, may, it, it may be, it, is it just, it, can it just be a medical thing sometimes? It can be. Some people who are taking, for example, certain antibiotics, and they're called aminoglycosides. They end in the suffix mycin, M-Y-C-I-N. Okay. Streptomycin, oh, that's the one that I would think, right? all these, these, these antibiotics are known to be ototoxic, ear Ta they kill hair cells. Mm. Some of them attack balance more than hearing, some hearing more than balance. But the popular one, erythromycin, don't worry about that one, people, because that's a common, that doesn't fit in the camp. That's okay. So if you're looking at, at, at a prescription, oh, I'm, I'm taking that, I've got a erythr erythromycin, E-R-Y-T-H-R-O, you know, mycin. Right. That, that one's cool. Okay. But the other ones are known to be ototoxic. They cause tinnitus. Interesting. Aspirin. Aggravates you mentioned tinnitus, that, but too. aspirin doesn't kill hair cells. It just angers them. It causes tinnitus, but it doesn't cause hearing loss. Those aminoglycoside antibiotics I was talking about cause hearing loss and cause tinnitus. Is there any so kind of, of, of uh, supplement out there in, in the the naturopathic stores mm -hmm. that might in uh, some way... Some people have talked about uh, ginkgo biloba. Oh, yeah, right, sure. But again, it's... Eh, you know, the, the stuff that you commonly buy in the natural stores doesn't have a high enough concentration of it. Okay. In, in, you know, to be effective. But it, then again, it's not proven to be effective either. Mm. There's some approaches like mindfulness-based therapy, some Buddha approach. You know, like, embrace your tinnitus, man. Well, well, let's, listen to it well, louder, no, man. No, no, like, that, I want to talk live about Live the moment. Uh, listen to this. <laughs> I got I to take, <laughs> take a break, but this is, this is, part of, this is all part of the yes, therapy, isn't it? Yes. If you have a ringing in your ear or you know someone who does, you know how unbelievably annoying yes. this condition can be. Yes. I mean, we're having a bit yes. of a giggle at, yes. at, 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 you know, amongst ourselves here, um, but really it is a, just an extremely frustrating yes. uh, condition to live with. I'm really glad you're saying that because oh, that, that boy. you're hitting the nail on the head with it. It's and, the annoyance of it. And I want to talk more yeah. about, you know, I mean, you're, yeah. you're kidding around a little bit, yeah. but this whole psychological yes. approach to yeah. uh, dealing with tinnitus, yeah. uh, it, and we'll talk more yeah. about it. Our guest uh, from Next Gen Hearing and Mainland Hearing is uh, Dr. Ted Venema, who is an audiologist. And uh, by the way, Next Gen Hearing, Next Gen is N E X G E N hearing.com. Fabulous website and mainlandhearing.com, another one. And we'll talk more about the websites and uh, the bit of an offer going yes. on there. But uh, we'll take this quick break on Boomer Life and come right back at you. 
It's all about the baby boomer lifestyle. Boomer Life on AM 650.